Welcome to another deep dive. And today we're tackling a question that has puzzled humans forever. Like literally, why do things fall down? It seems so simple, right? You'd think so, but the answer is surprisingly tricky. And to help us unpack it all, we have a fantastic expert, well-versed in 17th century science, particularly the work of one Christian Huygens. Hi there. Now, some of our listeners might not be familiar with Huygens, but trust me, this guy was a rock star, astronomer, mathematician, physicist, inventor, you name it, he did it all. A true renaissance man. Absolutely. And one of his biggest passions was trying to figure out this whole gravity thing. Which was a real mystery back then. We're talking way before Newton and his laws of motion. Mm -hmm. So what were the big theories floating around back then? What were people saying about gravity before Huygens stepped in? Well, you had the ancient Greeks like Democritus. He had this idea of atoms, these tiny particles that make up everything. Right, the building blocks of the universe. Exactly. But his explanation for why these atoms would clump together to actually form, you know, stuff, it wasn't very convincing. It was a work in progress. To say the least. Yeah. Then there was Rene Descartes brilliant guy. But his ideas on gravity involved these invisible vortices pushing objects towards the Earth. Wait, vortices? Like swirling whirlpools? Of, what exactly were these vortices supposed to be made of? He believed space wasn't empty. That it was filled with this subtle fluid-like substance called ether. Okay, I've heard of ether. These vortices were like whirlpools in this ether, pushing objects towards the center, A for effort, right? Mm. But not very convincing. Not exactly a slam dunk explanation. Not at all. So along comes Huygens, and he was a different breed. He was all about observation, experimentation. He wanted to ground his theories in something solid. So he's bringing the scientific method to the table. I like it. But how do you even begin to study a force like gravity? It's not like you can just grab it and put it under a microscope. Exactly. And that's what makes Huygens' work so fascinating. He was obsessed with the work of Copernicus, who proposed that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, but actually revolved around the sun. Ah, the Copernican Revolution. Yeah. Big stuff. For those who might not know, can you give us a quick rundown? Sure. Basically, Copernicus said that the Earth and all the other planets in our solar system are orbiting around the sun. It was a radical idea back then because for centuries, people believed the Earth was the center of everything. Right. Talk about a shift in perspective. But how does this tie back to Huygens and his work on gravity? Well, one of the big criticisms of this whole sun-centered system was if the Earth is spinning, like Copernicus said, why aren't we all flung off into space? Okay, yeah, I can see why people would ask that. It's like spinning a ball on a string. The faster it goes, the more you feel that pull outward. Exactly. So Huygens knew that any theory worth its salt had to explain why we're not all just flying off the Earth if it's constantly spinning. And that's where his big idea comes in. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. What was Huygens' revolutionary solution? He proposed that what we experience as gravity is actually caused by a superfine invisible fluid that surrounds the earth and rotates along with it at incredibly high speeds an invisible fluid that's a pretty wild idea it reminds me a bit of descartes ether but it sounds like huygens had something much more specific in mind how does a giant invisible whirlpool explain why my coffee cup always seems to find the floor well, in Huygens' view, heavy objects, they don't exactly love to spin. They resist this universal rotation. They don't go with the flow like lighter objects might. So they're like the stubborn ones at the dance party refusing to join the conga line. Something like that. And because of this resistance, this refusal to spin, they get pushed inward towards the center of all the action. And that, my friend, is what we experience as gravity. Hold on. So it's not that things are being pulled down. It's more like they're being pushed in by this invisible swirling stuff you're getting it and to help visualize this huygens actually did this fascinating experiment with of all things a bucket of water wait a bucket of water seriously we're going from cosmic whirlpools to buckets now trust me on this one picture a bucket spinning really fast and inside there's a lump of spanish wax okay i'm picturing it is the wax just chilling at the bottom or what well it's denser than water right so as the bucket spins the wax actually gets flung to the edges but here's the kicker the moment you stop that bucket... The wax just stops moving, too. No, nope, it rushes right to the center. Okay, now that's just weird. But how does that explain gravity again? That was Huygens' genius. He saw the bucket as a mini version of Earth. The spinning fluid matter, that's the force pushing everything inward, just like we see with the wax in the bucket. So the Earth's like this giant spinning bucket, and we're all just lumps of wax being pushed inward. Pretty much. But, you know, it gets even weirder. Weirder? 
How could it be any weirder than a cosmic whirlpool pushing us down? Well, if this invisible matter is everywhere, constantly pushing on everything, shouldn't we actually feel it? You know, now that you mention it, it's like, should we be getting constantly bombarded by these tiny particles? Wouldn't that be noticeable? He would think so, right? Yeah. But Huygens, clever as he was, had an answer for that. He figured this fluid matter, this invisible stuff, it had to be way, way smaller than even air particles. So small and smooth it could pretty much pass through anything without us even noticing. Okay, I kind of get it. So it's like we're swimming in this sea of invisible stuff, but it's so fine it just slips right through us. Exactly. Think of it like air. We don't feel the individual molecules hitting us, do we? But we sure feel it when they all gang up on us as wind. Right. It's the collective force that matters. It's not the individual particles, but the overall push. But this whole thing still seems a bit off, doesn't it? How so? Well, we know things fall at different speeds. Like, a feather falls slowly, but a bowling ball. Mm. Not so much. Uh. How did Huygens explain that if this invisible matter is pushing on everything equally? Another great question. And yeah, Huygens knew about that. He said it wasn't just the invisible matter doing all the work. It's also about the objects themselves and what they're falling through. What do you mean? Think about it. When a feather falls, it's bumping into all those air molecules, right? That mm. creates resistance, slows it down. But a bowling ball, it just powers through that air like it's nothing. Because it's heavier. Exactly. More inertia. So even though the invisible matter is pushing on both equally, the feather's getting slowed down more by the air. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm starting to see it's like running through water versus running through air. But this whole invisible matter thing, I still have one more hang up. Hit me with it. If this invisible matter can flow through stuff, like a glass bottle, without any problem, mm -hmm. why does the bottle still have weight? Shouldn't it just slip right through this cosmic whirlpool? Ah, uh, now you're getting to the really mind-bending part. Huygens said that even though the invisible matter could pass through the empty spaces between the particles of an object. It couldn't go through the actual particles themselves. Exactly. Like, imagine this invisible fluid flowing all around each atom, pushing on them, but not going through them. It's kind of like, okay, imagine a net in a flowing river. Okay. The water can flow through the holes in the net, right? But the net itself is still affected by that flow, that force. I see what you mean. So the glass bottle still has weight. Because even though this invisible matter is kind of flowing through it, those individual atoms are still getting pushed on. You got it. It's like this cosmic game of atomic bumper cars. And get this, the denser the material, the more atoms packed in there, the heavier it feels. Because there's just more for that invisible matter to push against. Whoa, okay, my brain is officially bent. Yeah. So we've got this invisible force pushing on everything around us at a level we can't even see. Yeah. It's kind of trippy when you think about it. Right. But it gets even wilder because Huygens, he didn't just stop at this theory. He actually tried to figure out how fast these invisible particles had to be moving to create the gravity we experience. Wait, he could measure the speed of something he couldn't even see? How is that even possible? Well, remember how we talked about Huygens being obsessed with motion and mechanics? He was the guy who figured out how to make those super accurate pendulum clocks. Oh, right. Using a pendulum to keep time. Genius. Total genius. And it was those pendulums that gave him the key to figuring this whole thing out. He realized that the speed a pendulum swings back and forth is directly related to gravity. So stronger gravity, faster swing. You got it. So he used that knowledge to like reverse engineer the whole thing. He looked at how fast pendulums swing here on Earth. And from that, he believed he could figure out how fast those invisible particles had to be zipping around to create the gravity we're all familiar with. Okay, now I got to know just how fast are we talking about here? Give me the numbers. Okay, so spill the beans. What kind of speeds are we talking about with these invisible particles? Get ready for it. Huygens, he figured these particles had to be traveling at least 17 times faster than the speed of the Earth's rotation. 17 times. <laughs> okay, my brain's trying to catch up here. How fast is that? Like, practically speaking. Imagine, like, you're looking at a globe, right? Think about how long it takes the Earth to make one full spin. 24 hours, yeah. Now, picture a spot on the equator of that globe. Huygens is saying these invisible particles, they're whipping around so fast, that same spot would be doing a full rotation in, get this, about an hour and a half. An hour and a half. That's insane. Back then, people thought horses were fast mm -hmm. and birds. Mm -hmm. Did Huygens even address how, like, 
if we're getting bombarded with these things constantly at those speeds, why don't we feel a thing? He did. He did. Remember how he thought these particles are incredibly small and smooth? Like smoother than a bowling ball. Way smoother. He imagined them more like, okay, think of it like a constant gentle breeze blowing on you from every direction all the time. You know how you don't really feel each individual air molecule hitting you? Right. It's just air. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what he was getting at. The individual impacts of these particles, they'd be so tiny. We just wouldn't notice them in all the chaos. That's what I love about these deep dives. You never know what connections you're going to make. Big thanks to Christian Huygens for giving us so much to ponder. Indeed. And for all of you listening, here's a final thought to chew on. Huygens believed that even the tiniest particles of matter, those making up his all-pervading fluid, had a fundamental solidity to them. But what do you think lies at the very heart of matter? Is it something fundamental, something that goes beyond our current understanding of physics, something to think about as you go about your day? Until next time, keep those brains buzzing and we'll catch you on our next deep dive.